الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى ما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذكر اسم ربك وتبتل اليه تبتيلا سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم الله سبحانه وتعالى is our lord and he subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent all of us into this dunya and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wanted that he be known and that he be worshiped so he decided to create the creation when there was nothing there was allah and when then there will be nothing a time will come when everything will cease to exist then there will still be allah so the whole purpose of our life is that we live like the slaves of allah that's the only purpose for our life so when a baby is born until he goes back to his lord his time that he spends or she spends between in this dunya the, pur- the purpose of that that person's life is that they spend this life in the obedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the slavehood of slavehood slavehood of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test us he puts all of us into different conditions some people are rich some people are poor some people are healthy some people are sick some people get married some people don't some people have children some people don't some people have boys some people have girls some people have not like none some people have the mix some people have bigger houses some people are smaller some people get into some sort of calamities accidents some people never even have a headache so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts everybody into certain conditions to test that person as to if this person is going to remember me in his states or not and that's the sole purpose of the life that's it if people allah taala gives us we do shukr to allah always remember him always keep asking him always thanking him always be uh, being obedient to him making sure that we are not heedless of allah making sure that we are doing zikr of allah making sure that we are attributing everything to allah always not like wasting our time making sure we are with friends we are with family we are with children we, we are with spouses we are with parents whatever we remember allah all the time that's what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test whatever conditions he put us in that we all just remember allah if there is a calamity if there are the things that don't we don't like like our nafs doesn't like we still connect ourselves to allah ask allah for afia so this is what the, all this life is about that's it i mean there is nothing more nothing less <laughs> this is all what life this life is about so people go into different states because allah taala has put them in that state and allah taala wants to test that person that's it 
So Allah is our Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this, this name Allah is a beautiful name. Just imagine that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, told to all of us that when you have a baby, you make sure that you give him a good name or give her a good name. Because that's her right, or this, that's his right, the baby's right. That they get a good name. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa even told in the hadith, which is which are the best of the names, he said that Abdullah and Abdul Rahman are the best names. Right? And all there are many other good names. Right? But this is the right of the child that he gets a good name. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named one of the Prophet himself. And Sayyidina Zakariya alayhi salam, when he was not having a child and he saw that Sayyidina Maryam alayhi salam, she was getting unseasoned, off-seasoned fruits. And he thought, you know, I've become old, I've been asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a child all my life. He said, you know, if Maryam alayhi salam, she can get an off, get off-seasoned fruits, why can't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me an off-seasoned child? He was old. So he asked Allah. هُنَالِكَ دَعَى زَكَرِيَّ رَبَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Ya Allah, give me a child. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a glad tidings of the child, and he said, اسمه يحيى لم نجعل له من قبل سميا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have named him Yahya, and this is a name that I have never given anybody before you, before your child. Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a lot of value in the name. He he wants that people are given good names. Because there is an effect of the name on that person. Prophet sallallahu after people converted to Islam, they were like uh, mushrikeen before. Prophet sallallahu changed the names of a few people himself. Because it has an effect. It has an effect. So, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that all of his makhluk, his creation has, is given good name, just think about Allah, that his name, how beautiful that must have been. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created beauty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created these flowers and these colors and these rivers and sea and mountains and clouds that we all like so much. So just imagine how beautiful must have must be Allah. In Allah Jamilun Yuhibul Jamal. Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. Sibagat Allah Uman Ahsanu min Allah he said. And the colours of Allah and what colours can be better than the colour of Allah? Similar is is the name of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this name Allah, that's his personal name. It's the Zati, it's Zati, it's, it's his personal name. They're all the Sifati names as well, which are the attributes. Like Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Hanan, Mannan, Wudud, Wahab. These are all attributes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told this Ummah 99 of his attributes. And then there are some attributes that he only told to uh, his angels. And there are a few attributes that he ne- didn't tell anybody. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes are infinite, so of course his, his, the names that are associated with his attributes are also infinite. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us a few attributes of his, which are 99. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has beautiful names. And you should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with those names. So these are all at, like attributes. But this Allah is his personal name. And there's such a beautiful and unique name. It's very strange. It's like if, we, if the ulama have thought about, reflected upon his beautiful name, Allah. It says it's such a unique name that, that you know, if you, that even if you take the letters off it, Still there is a meaning of that. 
Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. And if you take out Alif from Allah, it becomes Lillah. Lillahi mulku samawati wal ard. For, to Allah belongs the, the, the dominion of the heavens and the earth. If you take out Lam, the first Lam becomes Lahu. Lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi ard. Or Lahu ma fi samawati wal ard. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. If you take out Lam, then it becomes Hu. That's also a Zamir that normally attributes to Allah. Such a beautiful, unique name. There's no other name like that. Allahu Akbar. And there is no dot, nukta, in his name as well. That's also a beauty of his name, Allah. Normally every name has some dot, right, a nukta. But it doesn't. And this is a very light on the tongue as well, Allah. You don't even have to close your mouth to, to, to say that. It's just with the very light movement of the tongue, Allah. There can't be anything like easier than that to, 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 to say that. Even La ilaha illallah, if you see all of La ilaha illallah, you don't even have to close your lips to, 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 to say La ilaha illallah. Such a, such an easy thing to say that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it so easy that everybody recites that La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. You don't even feel tired of saying La ilaha illallah. I mean, if you have to really close your lips and have to say something that, you know, your, your mouth gets, you know, it gets tired. But La ilaha illallah is just very light movement of the tongue. La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. That's why people who sing, they have this, this La 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 la, you know, it's very, very uh, common. Right, because it's very easy on their tongue, so they keep on, like saying that. It's, it's, it, they're they're not. It's not like just uh, uh, happened by accident. These are. This is an ayah in ayatillah. It's a sign from the signs of Allah. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah is difficult. Accepting Islam is easy. La ilaha illallah is accepting Islam. Muhammad Rasulullah is different. To, to act on it is difficult. Because Muhammad Rasulullah is the action. But you have to follow the messenger of Allah, believing in him as the messenger, and following his sunnah. That's the most difficult thing in your life. Even people start following sunnah, being consistent on the sunnah is very difficult. But la ilaha illallah is very easy. Everybody can say la ilaha illallah. This is such a beautiful name that you know, people who have studied Arabic, there's a, there's something called uh, idhafa, which is a mudaf in a mudaf ilay. That you, ha you attribute something to something, like kitabullah, the book of Allah. So all the idhafa is to, to uh to Allah, that book of Allah, Rasul of Allah, Rasulullah, Kitabullah, Baytullah. But there is no uh izafa of Allah towards anything. That's also a beautiful thing. You won't find like Allah before and then it's the, the izafa is to something else. Never in Arabic. So this this Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants all of us that we it should be in our hearts. This word Allah, this name Allah. That's why when a baby is born, what do you do? Number one thing. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. It's the first thing that goes into his right ear. Right? Name of Allah. Then his left ear again, Allah. And then if people really, really work on their lives, what should, should be ideally the last words before people go back to Allah? La ilaha illallah. So the last word should be also Allah. How do we call Adhan? Allahu Akbar. How do we end it? La ilaha illallah. Start with Allah, end with Allah. Kalima. It also end with Alil Allah, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. 
It comes in hadith that if somebody has a child, a son or a daughter, and if the parents that teach them the first, so first word as Allah, you know, when he or she starts talking, then for this thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them of all the previous sins. This is the barakah of Allah, the name of Allah. So, all the, at, the, the, the attributes of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us that we develop our ikhlaq, our character on those names. That comes in the hadith, that تَخَلَّقُوا بِأَخْلَاقِ Allah. That you should develop, you should purify your character on the, on the character of Allah. Like if he's a rahman or he's a rahim you should also be Rahim. If he's al ghani you should also be Ghani. So you should develop your character in, on, on the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this word, his personal name Allah, is to, is not to develop your character, it's to develop your connection with Allah. It's to develop your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way that the, the Quran starts, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It has both. It is the personal name and the, and the attributes. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be saved from the attacks of shaitan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say, A'udhu bil rahman shaitan rajim He didn't say that. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Because that Allah, the word Allah, it connects you to Allah. He said, call me if you have any danger with my personal name. You develop that connection with me and I'll save you. This word Allah has a lot of barakah, a lot of blessings. Right? I mean, the barakah doesn't have any English, English translation, by the way. It's just, we call it blessing, but you know, what's, okay. Barakah is a strange word and we have already spoken about barakah some time ago. And we all want barakah in our lives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in, that, that his being is, has baraka. Tabaraka alladhi biyadihi al-mulk wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. That blessed is he. On, in whose hands is the dominion of the heavens and the earth. And he has power over everything. So his being has barakah, but his name also has barakah. Tabaraka smu rabbika dal jalali wal ikram. That what the uh, what a blessed name is his. What a blessed name is of your Lord. Tabaraka smu tabaraka smu rabbika. What a blessed name your Lord has, or you know you. What, your, your, your Lord has a very blessed name. So his name has barakah. And some of us has said that when we say Bismillah, it acts some people, some, the one translation is with the name of Allah, but there is another tr translation which says with the barakah of the name of Allah, with the blessings of the name of Allah. So whenever we say Bismillah, that in other words, what we are saying is that we are invoking the blessings, the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His blessed name, because His blessed name is barakah. Right? That's why we have been told by our beloved, dear Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say Bismillah before doing any good thing. Before eating Bismillah rahman rahim or Bismillahi wa ala barakatillah. Doing anything, you start with the Bismillah. It is, comes in a hadith near meanings that if there is a, if there, you do a thing and you do not invoke Allah's name before that, then that thing is cut off from the, from the mercy of Allah. Another hadith is, same thing is about saying Alhamdulillah. And the ulama have a lot of debate on to ask, we should say Bismillah, Alhamdulillah. But that's, I mean, irrespective. That it's all about Allah. That we should say Bismillah. We should make it a habit of saying Bismillah and doing everything. 
you and my son play cricket? And we, what do we do first thing? We say Bismillah. And we don't start playing until we say Bismillah. You play, you eat, you do whatever. Should say Bismillah. And that's also a litmus test. Try to watch a movie before saying Bismillah. Uh, 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 after saying Bismillah. You feel that like strain. Oh my God. <laughs> right? That means there's something wrong. You tell somebody a lie, say Bismillah. You cheat, saying Bismillah. It's a litmus test. Say, try, ha make it a habit to say Bismillah before everything. And you will know if that's a good thing or it's not a good thing. It gives you that wakuf qalbi as well by staying, saying Bismillah. People come and say, you know, how can we have this uh, feeling that Allah is with us all the time? Make a habit of doing bism saying Bismillah. Do everything according to the Sunnah. These are two things that can bring you in that state of being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Make it a habit. Right? And if you look into like the, the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa I mean, he was saying Bismillah before everything. Eating, drinking, getting into your car. Bismillahi Allahu Akbar. Put your right foot in. Bismillahi Allahu Akbar. Right? There's another dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught in the Nuh alayhi salam. When he was on the ship, when, you know, everybody, he made dua to Allah, Ya Allah, I... I gave them uh, the message day and night. They didn't listen to me. Ya Allah, you know, just, just destroy them. And save me and all the people who believed in me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to make a ship. And they got into a ship and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent flood. Water from, from the ground and it also started raining. Just imagine what strange situation that must have been. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him? He says, so whenever you have to drive the ship, you say Bismillah. When you have to stop it, say Bismillah. Bismillahi majreha wa mursaha. Inna rabbi la ghafoorur rahim. That with the name of Allah, uh, I drive it and I, I uh, that it, 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 it runs and it stops. Subhanallah, in that flood, that destroyed everything. What saved Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam and his fam his his, his uh, people was Bismillah, the word of Allah. The ulama say that if you you have the word of Allah in your heart, it will save you on the day of judgment when you will be passing on the on the bridge of Surat. If it can save Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam and his people from the flood. And it wasn't a normal flood. It destroyed the whole earth. And this Bismillah, it saved them. Bismillahi majreha wa mursaha inna rabbi la ghafoorur rahim. In the Quran. So this is, this Allah, word Allah has a, this lot of power. It's a lot of power. We don't recognize that. And this is so unfortunate. You know, we come, we sit on the table, we have like, mashallah, Allah Ta'ala's blessing on, on the table, every sort of, whatever, we feel like we eat it. You know, people are married, their wives ask them, what do you want to eat? What should I cook today? And they get upset if you don't tell them. <laughs> so you, that means that you have a choice. What do you want to eat today? This is the blessing of Allah, that you can eat whatever. And still we, our tongues don't move just to say Bismillah before we have to eat. In other words, we don't even recognize that the blessings are from Allah. In other words, that we have failed to recognize that we are the people of Allah. In other words, we have failed to recognize that we have come from Allah and we are going back to Allah. In other words, that we have failed to recognize that this word, this life is a test from Allah. In other words, we have failed to recognize that what is the purpose of our life. 
If we have failed to say Bismillah before we have to start, we have to eat. What sort of believers are we? And we have to ask this question to ourselves. If we are just living our life our way, then you know, it's a big question mark. We have to ask this question to our own selves, who are we? When we say, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, it's like, just like, some, like, uh, this, this saying the words, just saying a few words from our tongue, right? And this love, this word Allah is such powerful, this word Allah is the thing that's holding this earth. It comes in the hadith, Prophet ﷺ said, لا تقوم الساعة حتى يقال في الأرض الله الله These are the words of the Prophet ﷺ of Qamaqal. The لا تقوم الساعة that the day of judgment will not come حتى يقال في الأرض الله الله Until it is said on this earth, Allah Allah if there is a single person saying Allah, Allah, the word Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not order for the day of judgment to be established on the earth. Allah Akbar. And it also comes in the hadith that when the last person who would be saying Allah, Allah, when he'll, he'll go away, he'll pass away, then after after 40 years of that person passing away, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order Sayyidina Isra, uh, uh, Israfil alayhi salam to blow the trumpet. That means that the barakah, the power of this word Allah will continue for 40 years. Allah Akbar. This is the blessing of the word of Allah. Subhanallah. And they say that, ulama also say that if the power of the word Allah is that the day of judgment will not be established until one person is saying Allah, if the people have this Allah, the word Allah in their hearts, that heart can never have any calamity. That can, that heart can never have any calamity if that is in the heart. This word Allah is so powerful, just imagine. That two people who can't even see each other, a man and a woman, it's haram for them to look at each other. Just because of the, the word Allah, the connection that established because of word Allah, they become the closest people to each other in their lives. An animal, you know, you, 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 you kill the animal, it's haram eat a cow or a goat haram to eat if it's killed or it's dead it, you just know what you have to do say bismillah you kill the animal that's become halal what's the difference same thing you know we are all so <laughs> crazy about you know this meat stuff right it's halal it's haram it's halal it's haram what's the difference why don't you go and eat uh, eat anything that we feel like why are we so curious about? Because what we are curious about is if the person who has sacrificed it, did he say Bismillah? That's the only difference. But that's such a huge difference that has made it from haram to halal. That's the power of the word Allah, of the name of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that لا تأكل مما لم يذكر اسم الله عليه that do not eat on which the name of Allah has not been taken. Ibn Qayyim rahmatullah alayhi. He, in his, one of his books, he has written that this word Allah has a lot of benefits. He says, فَمَا ذُكِرَ هَذَا الْإِسْمُ فِي قَلِيلٍ إِلَّا كَثَّرًا that if this word is taken on something that is small in quantity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase that. He says, وَلَا عِنَّ خَوْفٍ إِلَّا أَزَالًا That if it is said, if somebody is in a state of fear, then it removes the fear. وَلَا عِنَّ قَرْبٍ إِلَّا كَشَفًا 
that if it is taken in the state of when people are in uh, uh, in an uneasy state, in a state of of some sort of uh, sadness, then that that uh, that thing goes away. Then if it is uh, if it is sad in the in in the time of again sadness, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove that of his state. So karb is the problem. So if it's if it's taken in the name of, in the time of some problem, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove that problem from him. And if it's taken in some store in time of sadness, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the sadness. And if it is taken in the in the time when there is constrictedness in the hearts of the people, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will 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 will, will bring in ease. وَلَا تَعَلَّكَ بِهِ ضَعِيفٌ إِلَّا أَفَادَهُ الْقُوَّةِ And then if, if, a, if a weak person takes this name of Allah and he connects to Allah with this name, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make that weak person powerful. وَلَا ذَلِيلٍ وَلَا ذَلِيلٌ إِلَّا أَنَالَهُ الْعِزَّةِ And if there are a person who is humbled and if he connects himself to Allah with the name of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him honor. وَلَا فَقِيرٌ إِلَّا أَصَارَهُ غَنِيًّا And if there is a, a, a poverty stricken, stricken person, if he's a poor person, if he takes this name with, the, uh, with abundance, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him rich. وَلَا مَغْلُوبٌ إِلَّا أَيَّدَهُ وَنَصَرًا And if somebody has been suppressed, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him victory. وَلَا مُضْطَرٌ إِلَّا كَشَفَ ضُرًّا And if there is a desperate person, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove him of that state. And he said, وَهُوَ الْإِسْمُ الَّذِي تُكْشَفُ بِهِ الْقُرْبَاتُ وَتُسْتَنْزَلُ بِهِ الْبَرَكَاتُ وَتُجَابُ بِهِ الْدَعْوَاتُ And this is the name with which the, 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 the problems go away, the barakat, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend, and the du'as are accepted. وَتُقَالُ بِهِ الْأَثْرَاتُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, will forgive oh, uh, uh, the, the mistakes. وَتَسْتَدْفَعُوا بِهِ السَّيِّئَاتُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will, will forgive the sins. وَتَسْتَجْلَبُوا بِهِ الْحَسَنَاتُ And it attracts the goodness. وَهُوَ الْإِسْمُ الَّذِي قَامَتْ بِهِ الْأَرْضُ وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ And this is the name through which the, the heavens and the earth are established. وَبِهِ أُنزِلَتِ الْكِتْكُتُبُ And this is the name through which the, the, the books have been descended. وَبِهِ أُرْسِلَتِ الرُّسُلُ and this is the name through which the messengers have been sent. And this is the name on which the Sharia, all the Sharias have been, have been given. And this is a name, whoever takes this name, they are happy. They are the blessed ones. And whoever has been deprived of this name, they are, uh, 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 they are, they are shaqi, and they are deprived. So the thing that, that, uh, that makes a person, that differentiates a person from being successful and being a person at loss is this name, Allah. Subhanallah. And it is, it is a name that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used in this book so many times. The many Qur'ans, if you read, you know, this word Allah is highlighted and you will be amazed, right, with a different color. Is that how many times the word Allah has been has been taken in the Quran? In Surah Al Mujadila, in every single ayah, there is the, the word Allah has, is is uh, comes. Allahu Akbar. In some ayah, there are two times, three times, four times. There are some ayah, there are five times. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has taken His blessed name, Allah. And there is a difference of opinion if this is the Ism Azam, the the big name. Imam Hanifa Rahmatullah Alayhi says it is. Some other ulama says that Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum is the Ism Adam because it comes in the hadith if some, if, if, if a dua is being, Allah, if you ask Allah with the, the, the greater name Ism Adam, the greatest name, then your duas are accepted. Imam Hanifa Rahmatullah Alayhi says that this is the word, the name Allah is the Ism Adam. Right? So, we should 
write this name on our hearts, my friends. We should make a habit that we, we take this name of Allah all the time. We should do a lot of tahleel, la ilaha illallah. We should make a habit that whenever we see something that's amazing, we say subhanallah. When we say something that we feel good about, we say mashaAllah. When we talk about something in the future, we say inshaAllah. When we are happy, we say alhamdulillah. When we are, we feel bad about something, we say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We should make a habit of taking this name. Start everything with, with bismillah. It's a lot of barakah and that's what, what all our life is about. Because it helps us to get connected to Allah. It has barakah, it has blessings. And when this, the love of Allah, it comes into the heart, then it's a very different taste of saying the name Allah. A normal person says something, and another person says something, the very different effect. It's a very different effect. For example, if you go to the school, somebody's school, and you just tell some kid, you know, you're expelled from the school. He'll make fun of you. Who are you to expel me from the school? If the principal says the same thing, he's expelled. Same word, same sentence, but there's an eff the effect is different. So we should have that much love of Allah in our hearts than when we say Allah, that it should have an effect. In our hearts, and to everybody as well. Once that Bedouin came to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was resting sallallahu alayhi wa sallam under a tree. And he had a sword. And he saw Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sleeping. He said, you know, oh, this is my time. And he woke the Prophet sallallahu and he had that like sword. He said, who is going to save me? Uh, who is going to save you from me? Prophet sallallahu said, Allah. <laughs> he started shaking. And the sword fell. Prophet sallallahu picked the sword up. He said, who is going to save you now? <laughs> he said, you know, please have mercy on me. Please forgive me. That was the effect of saying Allah that like that made him to shake. We say Allah and there's no effect. Forget about other people, there's no effect on our in our hearts or on our hearts. That's what the Prophet of Allah it comes in the books there was a city called Darband. And when the Tartars they came into the city I mean, they were very oppressive people. We know of them, right? What did they do? They killed everybody. So when they came into Darban, everybody left the city. Because they were, everybody was scared they were going to be killed. The one very pious person, a person of Allah, his name was Sayyid Ahmad Darbandi, rahmatullah alayhi. He said, you know, I'm not going to leave this place. He went into a masjid and he sat there. So, you know, the Tartars were very happy, their prince, that uh, he said, you know, everybody has left, I mean, everybody is scared of us. So, some people of, and uh, some of his people said, told him, you know, there is one person who is sitting in one of the masjids, and he is not leaving. You are saying everybody is scared, he is not scared. He said, bring him. So, they went to the masjid, and they put him handcuffs, and brought him in front of the prince. And the prince said, you know, everybody got scared, everybody left. You know, why, uh, who will save you from me? Don't you know I kill everybody? He said, Allah. And the handcuffs broke. This is the power of the people who have this Allah in their hearts. When they take the name of Allah, then, you know, the, the things happen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that about the true believers, that when people, the true believers who have this love of Allah in the hearts, then taking the name of Allah actually moves their hearts. 
Innamal mu'minuna The believers are who? Alladheena idha dhukir Allahu wajilat qulubu Then when Allah's name is is taken in front of them, their hearts shake. That is the definition of a true believer, a true person of Allah. And that is the reason that this love, this word Allah brings that peace in the heart. Allah bizikri Allahi al qulub. That, that indeed, with the remembrance of Allah, the heart goes into peace. It finds rest, peace. People of Allah, when they they are disconnected from Allah, they start feeling a very, like a bad feeling. As if they have been deprived of their beloved for a long time. You know, for example, people are working, they go to jobs, they go to work, and you know, they have, they're engaged into all of these meetings and this and that. A time comes that you know, something is missing. Something is missing. And then it's time for Dhuhr and they go into the masjid and say, Allah Akbar, and then they know what was missing. It was Allah who was missing. And suddenly, you know, it's all of that peace comes back. And they pray and they go back, get their some themselves busy in the work, and again, you know, after some time, as if they've been disconnected from their beloved. This is the state, or this should be the state of people of Allah. That's what exactly it is. Allah bi dhikrillahi tutma'innul qulub. Whenever you are in state that you don't like, somebody insulted you, somebody said something bad to you, whatever, and your heart is heavy, there's only one solution. Sit in the, on the musalla, do the dhikr of Allah, raise your hands, talk to Allah, and you will find that peace. And if somebody has come, and you know, he's patted you on the back, and said, don't worry, I'm with you. When you feel that peace in the heart. Now people go and complain to the whole world, you know, what this happened, that happened, and you know, still they come back with the same condition and they sleep at night with a heavy heart. Why don't they try and ask Allah, raise your hands, connect to Allah. That's the effect of the word of Allah or Allah on the hearts. That's what Allah is saying, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you do the remembrance of Allah with His blessed name. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you cut, there should be a time in your day, every single day, that you cut yourself from the creation. You forget about everybody. And you hook yourself to me and you do my remembrance with my blessed name. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that from all of us. He ordered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was given, made a prophet, he said that you should do it because that gives you that spiritual strength that keeps you moving in this dunya if you really want to be successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرْ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا that you do the remembrance of Allah with His blessed name, Allah, and you cut yourself absolutely from the creation of Allah. This tabattul is that you are 100% focused on Allah and you totally disconnect from the creation of Allah. Allah Ta'ala wants us that we have that those moments with Him. You know, when you truly love somebody, truly love somebody, then you want to have some special moments with him or her. That's the nature of love. You want to talk to him or her. You want to have those moments. That's a sign of this, one of the signs of the love. And if we all claim to be Muslims and believers, and but we don't have that love of Allah, Allah Ta'ala wants us that if you are believers, 
then we should have the love of Allah. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ The people of Iman, they are extreme in the love of Allah. That's a sign of the believer, of a believer. And if there is true love, then we should have, we should try to find those moments when we are with Allah. We're always talking, you know, to our families, to our children, to our spouses, to our parents, to our friends, to people around us. But why don't we find time to be with our Allah so that we can talk to Allah? The people of Allah, when they really develop that love, they don't want to talk to the creation. One of the signs that they develop love of Allah, that their speech decreases. They're not gossiping anymore. Their phone bulls go down. They're free minutes, nights and weekends and they're not utilizing those. Because they don't find any goodness in there. They want to be rather friends with Allah than like gossiping with people. There are no more parties, this party and that party, just wasting time. Yes, I'm not saying don't, should not meet with people. Meet with people, but just for saying how are they doing. Like if they're okay, mashallah, then you do your thing, I'll let me do my thing. This is a sign of a believer that they are, that's what Prophet ﷺ said, you know, that Mansawat and Ajah, that whoever kept quiet, he has, he, has, he has been saved. So the idea is that, you know, we should be more, we should find peace in connecting to Allah and we should find a moment in our, in every single day that we have nobody but Allah and we do the dhikr of Allah with His blessed name Allah. وَذْكُرْ إِسْمَ رَبِّكَ That you do the dhikr of Allah with His blessed name وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا And you do take a state of being in this of, of tabattul. You get into the state of tabattul. Shouldn't be anybody in the room. Nobody should be talking to me. This time is between me and my Allah. Please don't disturb me. قَدْ أَفْلَهَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى Indeed, that person is successful who has purified his nafs, who has purified himself. وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ And who has done the remembrance of Allah with His blessed name. Allah فَصَلَّى And then he prays. Because it's the words of Allah. Allah Ta'ala wants that we get those blessings that are tied to His blessed name, Allah. And people who, who get this taste of Allah, you know, they're amazing stories. When people truly get into, get into that love, that special connection with Allah, it's an amazing, amazing things happen. We haven't got the taste. That's our problem. We say, La ilaha illallah, but we have all other priorities except Allah. That's our problem. We are still not believed. قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا Tell them you have not believed yet. Just tell them you have submitted. We are only in the state of Islam. We are not in the state of Iman. Because if we were in the, truly in the state of Iman, we would have loved Allah the way that He should be loved. We should have enjoyed taking the name of Allah. We should have remembered Allah. We should have had connection with Allah. We don't have it. If you enjoy sinning, that means that we are enjoying disobeying Allah. <coughs> There's a very famous pious sheikh, his name was Shibli Rahmatullahi. He was a governor in one of the towns called Nahawand. And once the king called all of his governors, and there was a custom at that time that whenever he had to honor somebody, he will give them a gown. So he brought all of his governors and he gave all of them gown and he, he invited all of them for a party to, to, to celebrate that occasion. As if somebody's given a crown. So he was, they were all given a gown. And that was like the, the royal gown. So he brought all the governors and one of the governors, you know, it's from like it's very natural. 
he wanted to sneeze. No, but they're like very, like, quote-unquote, honorable gathering. He, he, he didn't want to really sneeze. He was trying to, like, suppress it. But eventually, you know, he started sneezing. And there weren't any tissue papers, you know. So, I mean, the fluid started coming out of his nose. What he did was, you know, he, he rubbed the nose with his hands and rubbed it against his gown. The king saw him. He said, oh, my royal gown. What are you doing with my royal gown? So, you know, he started insulting him. I gave you this gown in honor and respect and this is what you have done. Just give me that gown and I expelled you from your 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 position. And he insulted him in front of everybody and, and, and made him go away. So, Abdul Shibli, rahmatullahi, he was also a governor at that time. So he saw all of that. And 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 so and also the king he he dismissed the the gathering. He said everybody just go because his mood changed. So after some time, Allah Shibli Rahmatullah he came into the into his presence. He said, you know, I want to talk to you. I said, what? He said, do people have control if they have to sneeze? So now the king thought, you know, something is, you know, his his tone is different. It's not like that submissive tone. He said, what do you want? He said, you know, I've been thinking that you gave the, him honor and respect and you gave him your, his, this gown that he had to wear in, 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 for, for that honor that you have given him and he didn't honor your gown and you insulted him in front of everybody. Allah Ta'ala has given me a gown which is being Khalifatullahi fil ard. I am the representative of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on this earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this gown to me that I have to wear. I have to be a slave of Allah. I have to live this life as Abdullah. So what if Allah ta'ala insults me on the day of judgment in front of everybody that I gave you that gown of honor that you were supposed to be Khalifa, my Khalifa. And you were supposed to be my slave. And you were supposed to live life according to my wishes and my orders. And you dishonored that. You didn't give it proper respect. What if he insults me in front of everybody on the day of judgment? He said, I don't, do not want your gown. This is your gown. I'll, I'll let me, I, I'm just going. I don't want this position. And he went and he went to some of the mashaykh. He started like learning, developing the love of Allah in their heart, in his heart. And subhanAllah, what a mujahidah, what a great thing that he did. And he, Allah Ta'ala gave him so much love in his heart that he would always keep something sweet in his, in his pocket. So that anybody will say the word Allah in front of him will take out that sweet, whatever candy, and he'll put it in his mouth. He said that, I, you know, I want that anybody takes the name of my beloved and wants that this sweet thing to go in his, in his mouth. Allah. This is love. Another story, somebody, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to test in uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Khalilullah, was given the title of the friend, of being friend of Allah. So the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Sayyidina Jibra'il alayhi salam, in a, and he was, he was grazing his sheep, and he came in a form of a normal man, and he said, you know, Subhana dil mulki wal malakut, Subhana dil izzati wal azmati wal haybati wal qudrati wal kibriyai wal jabarut. But he said these words in Ibrahim salam. Somebody taking the praising Allah. He said, you know, can you please repeat what you said? He said, what will you give me in, in return of that? He said, I'll give you half of my sheep. He said again, Subhana dil mulki wal malakut. Subhana dil izzati wal azmati wal haybati wal qudrati wal kibriyai wal jabarut. He got again, his heart started moving. Alladheena idha dhukir Allahu vajilat qulubu. He said, you know, please say it once more. He said, what will you give me? He said, I'll give the rest of my sheep. He said it again. He said, please, once more. He said, you don't have anything. What are you going to give me now? He said, you know, don't you need a person who will take care of your sheep? I am your slave. He said, I don't need anything. I am the, I'm the angel. Allah Ta'ala wanted to test that he calls himself my Khalil. So what will happen to him if you take my name in front of him? This is love. Where is that love? We are supposed to have that love because we are <laughs> believers. 
انمل مؤمنون الذين اذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم So we should ask ourselves these questions. And if it's not there, something is missing. How will we be able to say La ilaha illallah at the time of our death? Ask this question to yourself. If we don't have that love of Allah, if we're not living a life of Allah, if we have not dedicated our life for Allah, then how will we be able to say La ilaha illallah at the time of our death? Everybody just takes whatever is easy for them. If there's a sister, you know, you encourage her, she will start praying, but she will never put on hijab. Because that's difficult, that's change in her life. Okay, Allah Ta'ala gives her another tawfiq, she starts putting on hijab, but she will not change her lifestyle. Because that's, that's something that she cannot afford. Because that's a chain in her life. That means that you are only doing things that are easy for you. That that means that's, you know, that, 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 that the true love of Allah has not come in the heart. Talk to your brother. He will start praying, he will start like, maybe following a few sunnahs that are easy. Ask him to wear a beard. He will not do that. Oh, what will my friend say? What will my boss say? Some people go to Umrah, they don't shave their heads. Because they feel ashamed. How will they come and, and face their, co their colleagues? Because there will be nothing left to put their gels on. That means that we are only doing the things that are easy on us. Then where is Allah? If we cannot change our lives 100% for the sake of Allah, that means that He is not on our, like, on the top of our priority list. If we only are doing whatever is easy, then there is something definitely wrong. So we should bring Allah in our hearts. And that's our mashaykh, that's why they say that we should do this tabattul. We should go into the state of tabatul every single day. We should do the zikr of Allah with His blessed name Allah in our hearts so that the love of Allah comes in our heart and then we be able to change our life for the sake of Allah. This love, word Allah has a lot of barakah. If it can withhold day of judgment, it can, it can, then, then, then imagine that what miracles can it bring. When people are giving the askar, the remembrance uh, of doing the doing the dhikr of the word Allah in their hearts, people come and ask, you know, what benefit does it bring to me? Can you tell me what 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 what's the benefit? <laughs> First of all, it's the remembrance of Allah, and Allah Taala orders that you do excessive dhikr of Allah. But this, the, the remembering Allah with the name of Allah, it can bring miracles. If somebody wants to test it, try it. And people's life change. Their lives do change. It has a lot of blessing, this word Allah. So we should, we should dedicate some time of our, of our day to remember Allah with this blessed name in our hearts. So that it can change our heart. It can bring that love of Allah in our hearts. So that it also helps us to change our life for the sake of Allah so that a time comes that our whole life is dedicated to Allah. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen My prayer, my sacrifice, my life, my death, everything is for Allah. Nothing is mine. If I get up in the morning, I get up for Allah. I go to work, I go for Allah. 
Because I have to earn, that's an order of Allah so that I can feed my children with halal risk. If I sleep, I sleep for Allah so that I can get some rest so that my body is fresh the next day. I'm not wasting my time because my time is too precious because I have to, I have to prepare for my journey to Allah. Every single minute that I spend should be spent for the cause of Allah. And this is my life. And that can, this change can only come if we do excessive zikr of Allah with His blessed name Allah. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq that we be able to get the barakah of this powerful name of Allah. And we should definitely, we should change our lives for Allah. We should totally 100% be submitted to Allah. Nothing should happen in our, in our lives but that it should be for the sake of Allah. Every single thing should be for the sake of Allah. Just dedicate your lives for Allah, for the service, for the service of the deen of Allah, to worship Allah, or whatever, but should be for Allah. And Allah Ta'ala takes different things, different works from different people. Doesn't matter if you are a doctor, or you're an engineer, or you are a laborer, or you are a sweeper. If that is for Allah, that's accepted. If you are teaching, or if you are bringing your children up in, in, the, in the true submission of Allah, doesn't matter, because it should be for the sake of Allah. But whatever you do, make sure that every single minute that you spend in your life should be for Allah. This should be the criteria. Judge your lives. And see where does Allah stand in your life. It should be on that priority number one. And if he's not the priority number one, then know that you are also not priority number one is Allah's list. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq that we be able to understand that and we be able to mold our lives absolutely for the sake of Allah. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Ya tera tazkara kare har shakhs Varna phir hum se kuft ku na kare Ya tera tazkara kare har shakhs Varna phir hum se kuft ku na kare देख ले जलवा तेरा जो एक बार गैर की फिर वो आरज़ू न करे पढ़ के ये लफ्स फिर मोमिन कैसे जन्नत की जुस्त जू न करे तेरी चौखट का मांगने वाला शिकवे दुनिया के रूबरू न करे इश्क नबवी हो जिसका सरमाया इत्तबा क्यों वहु बहु न करे रात दिन निर्मते जो पाए फकीर तत्करा क्यों वो चार सू न करे Ya tera tazkara kare har shakhs Varna phir hum se guft gu na kare La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa barik wa salli اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب لا إله إلا أنت 
سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات والأحياء منهم والأنبات إنك سميع قريب مجيب التعوات اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك وحبيبك سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذ منه نبيك وحبيبك سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد تديتنا هب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب يا أرحم الراحمين يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم انصر المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أكرم الأكرمين يا كريم يا غفار يا رحيم يا ستار يا ودود يا وهاب يا حنان يا منان يا حنان يا منان يا حنان يا منان يا الله يا الله please accept this gathering from all of us يا الله يا الله please accept this gathering from all us all of us يا كرم الكرمين يا الله please accept this gathering from all of us يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله people have come from far people have come from near يا الله يا الله people have taken out from their day يا الله to listen to your blessed words and to listen about your prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to do your ذكر to come in the gathering of ذكر يا الله the gatherings that you have said يا الله that the gatherings of light There are these are the gatherings that are surrounded by angels. Ya Allah, these are the gatherings that your angels look out for in this dunya. Ya Allah, people have spent their, Ya Allah, they have made a sacrifice to be in these gatherings. Ya Allah, because of the barakah of them coming into this gathering, please accept this gathering from all of us. Ya Arham Ar-Rahimeen, Ya Akram Al-Akrameen, Ya Kareem, Ya Khafar, Ya Wadood, Ya Hanan, Ya Manan, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please, Ya Arham Ar-Rahimeen, save our Iman. Ya Allah, this Iman that you have given to all of us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we have not thanked you enough for this beautiful blessing. Ya Allah, please, Ya Arham Ar-Rahimeen, we thank you for this blessing of Iman. We beg you, Ya Allah, that you save our Iman. Ya Allah, you perfect our Iman. Ya Allah, please perfect our Iman. Ya Allah, please perfect our Iman. ربنا أتمم لنا نورنا واغفر لنا ربنا أتمم لنا نورنا واغفر لنا ربنا أتمم لنا نورنا واغفر لنا يا الله please يا الله save iman of our children يا الله save iman of every single person who is going to come into the day of judgment يا الله please save iman of every single person who is going to come until the day of judgment Ya Allah, please save, save Iman of every single person who is going to come into the Day of Judgment. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, every single person in our generation, Ya Allah, make them your people. Ya Allah, make them your awliya. Ya Allah, make them, Ya Allah, your awliya. Ya Allah, make them your awliya. Ya Allah, give them the company of your awliya. Ya Allah, please give them the company of your awliya. Ya Allah, please give them the company of your awliya. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, please accept every single one of them for the service of your deen. Ya Allah, please give them guidance. Ya Allah, please don't let, Ya Allah, make them go astray, Ya Allah. 
Ya Rahman Rahimin, Ya Akram al Akramin. Ya Allah, please accept us for the service of your deen, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimin, Ya Akram al Akramin. Ya Allah, you have said that in your beautiful book, Ya Allah, that there were two orphans that, that you saved their prayer because their father, their grandfather were, were righteous people. Ya Allah, we know that's what we have heard, Ya Allah, that you save the generations if we become righteous. Ya Allah, we ask you for your tawfiq, that Ya Allah, that we become righteous, Ya Allah, that because of the barakah of that, that you give us a good ending and you give our children, you make our children righteous and pious, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Akram al Akrameen, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhuriyatina qurat a'yun. وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Ya Allah, make us the leaders of the muttaqeen. Ya Allah, make us the people, Ya Allah, that are the mountain of taqwa. Ya Allah, make us the people, that people take them as their imam of taqwa. Ya Allah, so that they follow us and because of following us, Ya Allah, they also get the guidance and you give us all the reward that they, they do as well. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, Ya Akram al Akrameen. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we are beggars at your door. Ya Allah, you yourself have said that, Ya ayyuhal nas, antumul fuqara'u ilallah. Ya Allah, we are so honored to be your beggars, Ya Allah. We are here at your door, Ya Allah, we beg you of your mercy. Ya Allah, we beg you of all the blessings of this dunya in the hereafter. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, Ya Akram al Akrameen. Ya Allah, please, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Don't let us go, Ya Allah, without giving us your blessings, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Allah, please do not let us go, Ya Allah, without the fact that you have forgiven us. Ya Allah, please don't let us go without the fact that you have seen us with the sight of love, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, fill our hearts with your love. Ya Allah, please fill our hearts with your love. Ya Allah, please fill our hearts with your love and the love of your beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And with the love of the people that you love, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Allahumma inna nas'aluka hubbaka wa hubba man yuhubbuka wal amal alladhi yuballibuna an hubbaka. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, Ya Akram al-Akrameen. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we all accept, Ya Allah, that we have destroyed our lives disobeying you. Ya Allah, but we have nobody to turn to accept you. Ya Allah, you have so many of your ibad. Ya Allah, but we have only one Lord. Ya Allah, there is no other place, no other being that we can go to. There is no other door that we can go to, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, do not reject us. Ya Allah, please do not reject us. Ya Allah, please do not reject us. Ya Allah, we have no excuses for the disobeying, Ya Allah, that we have done. Ya Allah, we beg you, Ya Allah, that you forgive us and you do not reject us and you accept us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, it's only because of your tawfiq, Ya Allah, that we become, we can become righteous, that we can become your people, Ya Allah, we beg you of that tawfiq, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimeen, when a baby is filthy, Ya Allah, the parents, the mother never throws the baby away, she always cleans the baby, put on new clothes and hugs the baby. Ya Allah, our hearts are filthy, but we know that you love us more than 70 mothers. Ya Allah, please do not reject us, do not throw us away, Ya Allah, because of the filth that we have brought. Ya Allah, please clean our hearts, purify our hearts with khair. Ya Allah, and put on new clothes of taqwa, of sunnah on us, Ya Allah, please accept us. Ya Allah, please look at us with that one side of love. That is, Ya Allah, enough to change our lives, Ya Rahman Rahimi. Ya Allah, our hearts have become hard. Ya Allah, we read, Ya Allah, Quran, but there is no effect on our hearts. Ya Allah, your blessed name is taken in front of us and our hearts don't move. Ya Allah, we pray, Ya Allah, five times a day, Ya Allah, but our hearts don't move. Ya Allah, we make dua to you, but our hearts don't move. Ya Allah, we come and sit in these blessed gatherings where our hearts don't move. <laughs> ya Allah, when will that time come? Ya Allah, when will hearts will move? 
Ya Allah, please make this day that day, Ya Allah, that you move our hearts. Ya Allah, please move our hearts. Ya Allah, please remove the seal that we have put on our hearts by disobeying you. Ya Allah, please move our hearts. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, Ya Akram al -Akramin. Ya Allah, give us those blessings. Ya Allah, give us the blessing of those tears that fall from our eyes in your remembrance. In your love, in your fear, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please do not take the, that blessing away, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. Ya Akram al -Akramin, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. Give us tawfiq that we be able to live this life for your sake and that we die for your sake. Ya Allah, please give us tawfiq that we live this life for your sake and we die for your sake. And Ya Allah, let us die in a state that we have kalima on our tongue and yaqeen in our heart. And Ya Allah, you call our nafs with those blessed beautiful words of Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati Ya Allah, please give us, a, Ya Allah, death of a martyr. Ya Allah, give us a, Ya Allah, give us our Last place, Ya Allah, in the feet of your beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, Rahimeen, Ya Akram al in a state that you are happy with us. Ya Allah, make our graves from the garden of paradise. Ya Allah, please make it spacious. Ya Allah, make the questions easy for us. Save us from the punishment. Ya Allah, save us from the punishment. Ya Allah, save us from punishment. Ya Allah, save us from the punishment of this dunya and the hereafter, and of the day of judgment, Ya Rahman Rahimeen, and of the hellfire. Ya Allah, please forgive us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, when it's time to be raised up in front of you, Ya Allah, please raise us in a state that you are smiling at us and that you are happy and you are give us our books in our right hands. Ya Allah, you give us the shade of your throne when there is no other shade. Ya Allah, make the good deeds heavy on our scales. Give us the water from the blessed hands of your beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Allah, join all of us together under his flag. Ya Allah, please make us pass the bridge of Sarat with the speed of light and give us a space in the blessed feet of your prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in paradise. Ya Allah, we ask you for all the good of this dunya and the hereafter. Ya Allah, Ya Karma Lakrameen, Rabbana Atina Fid Dunya Hasana, Wa Fil Akhirati Hasana, Wa Qina Adab Al Nar, Wa Qina Adab Al Qabri, Wa Qina Adab Al Hashri, Wa Qina Adab Al Mizan. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Allah, we have been told that even if we have to ask for a shoelace that we ask you, Ya Allah, we ask you for all the khair of this dunya and the hereafter, all the treasures of this dunya and the hereafter with khair. And Ya Allah, give us tawfiq that we be able to use this dunya for the akhirah. Rabbana taqabbal minna innak anta sameeh wal alim wa tub alayna innak anta tawab rahim Ya Allah, all the people who have asked for du'as, Ya Allah, you know their Ya Allah needs better than us. Ya Allah, we beg you, Ya Allah, that you give them more than what they are asking for, more than what they are thinking of. Ya Allah, people who are sick, please give them cure. A cure, Ya Allah, that, that the sickness never goes back to them. Ya Allah, people who are misguided, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please give them guidance. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman people who are ignorant, give them knowledge, give them beneficial knowledge that they can act on. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, Ya Akram al -Akramin. people who have asked for anything, Ya Allah, please grant them, Ya Allah, all the khair of this dunya and the hereafter. Rabbana taqabbal minna innak anta samiul alim, wa tab'alayna innak anta tawab al-Rahim, wa sallallahu wa ta'ala ala khayri khalqihi Muhammadin, wa la alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, bi rahmatika Ya Rahman Rahimeen, alhamdulillah.